Okay, so I'm going to record the video and do a charisma check for entertaining. Ah, crap. The internet can be both a wonderful and terrible place. The entire knowledge base of the human race is available to you with just the click of a button, along with cute videos of puppies and kittens and toothless little children. And then sometimes it brings you things like this. Nerd, smarty pants, geek, things you'd never hear said about either of us, obviously. Never, sadly. Uh, sadly, but they are words used to describe someone clever, aren't they? But, um, should these terms now be treated as a hate crime? As a hate crime? A hate crime. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, today the internet gave us a call to label use of the words nerd and geek a hate crime. Brought to you by the same country who banned gender stereotypes and, through collateral damage, stripped cream cheese of its advertising. Welcome to another edition of Hashtag Not the Onion. And in honor of today's topic, I'm repping free speech with this shirt from Libertarian Country. You can check them out in the description as a way to help the channel and pick up some freedom-loving threads. Dr. Sonia Falk, who is a British psychotherapist and psychology lecturer that is giving the rest of us therapists a bad name, appeared on Good Morning Britain to talk about the need to add IQ to the list of protected qualities under hate crime law. Because, she argues, smart people are marginalized in today's society, and calling them names should be right up there with, you know, racist lynchings and bombings of churches and temples. Totally reasonable. She argued, Well, I think people do find it startling because very high IQ people are a minority group in society that are very much ignored. Yes, smart people like Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Stephen Hawking, Einstein, and Elon Musk, to name a few, are completely ignored and not at all household names. And they're not understood and are largely neglected. And yes, they are so neglected that they don't have an entire TV show dedicated to nerdum, despite Sheldon Cooper being in the background. Along with, oh, look, beloved heroine Hermione Granger. Yeah, definitely, nerds don't ever get any cred. She goes on to argue that the use of words like nerd, geek, and egghead, which I did not realize was in common use, needs to be classified as a hate crime in order to stop bullying. Number one, I don't know of any bullying laws that actually stop bullying. At the risk of inflaming sister fate, this bully-free period has been an Arcadian idol. Hear, hear, idol. Number two, yes, as a nerd, I rolled a d20 at the start of this video, I can attest to being bullied at school as a kid, and for being the smart, quiet kid with glasses. <gasps> I'm a nerd. <gasps> so am I. But kids are, unfortunately, cruel, and will find just about anything to tease another kid over. If we are really looking to stop bullying here, it needs to be addressed at home with good parenting rather than through the justice system. I would hope that anyone who is supposedly an expert in psychology would understand that, as it's pretty basic stuff. Children behave based on the examples they're given, not by legal doctrines. One of Falk's main complaints is that dictionary definitions of geek and nerd and dork often contain the phrase socially awkward or person who lacks social skills. Words do evolve over time, but it is also true that there are many words like um, egghead, brainiac, if you look them up, and nerd itself, means socially We've got, awkward it's and interesting, though, um, contemptible. Yeah, um, sorry that Merriam-Webster is just telling it like it is. Sometimes you just have to sacrifice your lowest role to your charisma stat, and you know what? That is okay. 
Fox TV, the this show. quiz show's called both those things, Brainiac and Eggheads, and they're seen as things to aspire to, to, to have that sort of intelligence, to have that sort of academic brilliance. Well, I think that's the, the sort of spot, the limelight version of it, right. where people who are, like Bobby's a great example of somebody who has a great talent in mathematics and a great talent for communication, so is able to put those ideas across and be really accepted. But to, to get legislate, targeted. I mean, you actually, you want the law to be changed? Well, I think neurodiversity is an aspect of individual difference which really ought to be recognised in our society. The same society, mind you, that claims that meritocracies, that is giving grades, raises, promotions or awards based on skills and hard work, are oppressive and racist. So are the nerds intellectual white supremacists or marginalised minorities? What the f*** do we do? Pick one, SJWs, you cannot have both. Obviously, again, you shouldn't bully people because they're different. But the reality is, if we're classing it as a hate crime to call someone a nerd or a Greek, I think what it does is it trivialises actual hate crimes, you know, based on disability, race, gender. But again, the term geek and nerd, etc., generally has been embraced. And if you look at technology, you look at the Mark Zuckerbergs, mm. Bill Gates. This guy gets it. Some of the other really serious. Well, I would hate certainly not want to. Just... Well, I wouldn't want to trivialize anything. Um, but you are. Well, um, we're seeing how people are reacting to it. Maybe people think so. Um, but there is, if you look at those legislations that relate to hate crime, hate crime is simply about somebody being targeted in a negative way for who they are. And a person with a very high IQ who comes across in a different way often is targeted in that way. That's different! If you oh, compare it to it. racism and things like, you know, people walking down the street who visibly look different, Sexual who are discrimination. attacked about those sorts of things, for example. Well, and then you're, 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 you want to legislate against certain words, which, as many have said, as adults, they actually embrace it where it's a badge of honour. It is quite an extreme view, isn't it, yours? Well, um... <laughs> We should be sensitive uh, to certain things, but not yeah. everything. And that's the worry, is once you start with saying Greek or nerd, then you, you have to start you going, actually, you can't be a jock, which is a sports person. Yeah. You can't be a goth, because that's who you identify with. And everybody mm -hmm. just gets too sensitive about that. I wish people would think this rationally about all the other social justice outrages of the day. Not for nothing, but there are a lot of kids and teens out there that do things just because adults tell them not to, so they can be edgy and cool. If that weren't the case, then teen smoking wouldn't be as big of an issue, nor would this back alley kid vaping epidemic, or any of the other number of dumb things kids do to be rebellious. Anyone remember Tide Pods? Telling them you can't use this word is going to make them use that word which this guy brings up as a valid point. And again, if you we sort of say, oh, this is a hate crime, you'd be making that word a taboo. And again, mm. imagine I did an assembly in school saying tomorrow, last day of term. So Mr. Siegel, I'm telling you kids that you shouldn't call people geek and nerd. And it actually incentivizes people then to use that as a bullying mm. term rather than, I think Interesting. it's like, charge of the Fascinating. And what about those kids that embrace being a nerd? You know, nerd culture is mainstream now. So when you use the word nerd derogatorily, it means you're the one that's out of the zeitgeist. Aren't gamer chicks the new e-thought cam girls? Aren't nerds cool and sexy now? Didn't Stranger Things suddenly launch Dungeons and Dragons into pop culture? The Demogorgon is tired of your silly human bickering! Dr. Falk says that none of that matters because it's the intent that matters. If someone is using the word nerd with the intent of being mean and hurtful, then it should be a hate crime. I but I think the whole thing about hate crime is the intent with which names are called, and if somebody's being verbally abused to cause yeah. distress, On the that's the thing that I'm talking okay. about. I'm not yeah. talking about when people embrace it and are happy with it and feel that it's an identity that right. they have. Right, but if you legislate against call it, themselves. Yeah. Yeah. ban the word. An intent could be anything. Imagine like someone's a footballer or an artist. I could say, oh, Ben, you're a footballer. You're an artist. Again, I think with anything with the right, with intent on Venom can become offensive. Absolutely. And again, you can choose to take offense. The other panelist does make an excellent point. Words mean things, but they're still only words. You can choose whether or not to be offended by something. 
According to her bio on the University of East London website, this isn't the first time that Dr. Falk has led a crusade for the gifted. It was the focus of her doctorate dissertation and is listed as a specialization within her research and practice. She also has written and presented for Mensa and based most of the research for her new book off of 20 interviews with high IQ individuals, most of which were also Mensa members. She argues that their experiences of having a point of feeling like they didn't belong with their childhood peers at least once in their life is indicative of the trauma that were Words like nerd creates. Again, she's basing this off of 20 people, which is not exactly scientific. In England and Wales, a hate crime is already defined as any communication which is threatening or abusive and directed towards a person on account of their race, color, disability, nationality, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, or gender identity. The definition is already pretty broad and inclusive. I don't know if we really need to add more restrictions. Eventually, there won't be any words or speech left. And if we're now criminalizing intent on top of that, well, then I guess we can't really think anything legally either. That's it for today, guys. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, ring the notification bell, and check out the partners down in the description as they all help to keep the channel lights on and, by extension, help promote this channel's free speech. If you want to help support my channel in other ways, you can find me on Patreon and Subscribestar or give a one-time donation through PayPal or crypto. Until next time, thanks for watching and helping me to spread the message of liberty.